so I've been talking all this time about the perihippocampal place area, in part because I have a fondness for it, uh, and I wanted to kind of show you guys how you can follow a thread and start to figure out what a region is doing. But in fact, the perihippocampal place area is part of a broader navigation system that I'll talk about more next time, but I just want to sketch what some of the other regions are, some of which you've been reading about for the uh, assigned readings for today. Okay, so this shows in a folded up brain and a mathematically inflated brain, uh, all the regions that respond more to scenes than objects, okay, in yellow. So the PPA is this thing right there, okay? Everybody see that? And in the unfolded version, everybody oriented? Okay, so that's the region we've been talking about so far. Um, but there's two other regions here. There's this little guy hiding in the sulcus up here called RSC for retrosplenial cortex. And here it is unfolded where you can see more of it. It also responds more to scenes than objects. When Russell Epstein and I first worked on the PPA, we saw that blob. But this is, pr this is primary visual cortex right here. And we thought, oh no, we're really close to low level visual cortex. That's probably a visual confound. We're gonna shut up about that region. Turns out it's not a visual confound. It's really a scene selective region if you do it right, as many subsequent studies have shown. The third region um, used to be called TOS until the paper that you read renamed it OPA, which has produced you know, a little bit of a tiff in the literature because the power to name is like a godlike power and it pisses off your colleagues if you name anything and if you change the name, they really get pissed off. Anyway, never mind. You don't need to remember any of that. Just know there are th three of these. And one of them is out on the outer surface on me right about there. Probably seems like I'm always pointing to the same place when I do that. But it's, it's, more, it's more lateral, a little more superior, and actually a little more towards the parietal lobe. Okay? Uh, and of course, it's great that's out on the lateral surface. Why is that great? Why would I be excited about a scene-selective region that's out on the lateral surface of the brain? Anna? You can zap it. Absolutely. You can zap it with TMS and see what happens right, as one of your assigned papers does, okay? We would have loved to zap the PPA and RSC. We just can't reach in there with our, with our coils. Okay. Okay, so those are the three main scene selective regions, and of course also very much fundamentally part of the navigation network um, uh, is the hippocampus, which doesn't show here, but it's approximately right there, okay? So we'll talk more about the hippocampus next time. Uh, the neurons that are uh, in the hippocampus have been characterized in great detail um, and, and their surroundings, leading to um, a really fabulous story at the, at the single neuron level um, that, that is really kind of fleshing out in, in great detail the whole kind of circuit for navigation. Not that we can say what the brain regions and circuits are for each of those navigational functions I started with, but so we're starting to really get some clues about how that stuff works. Okay, so what we really want to know is how does each of these regions contribute to our ability to navigate around in the world? And so this is the list of things that I started with, and we're sort of asking what's the neural basis of this? And so I didn't get that far today. Mostly we talked about the PPA and its role in perceiving the layout of space around you. Okay, the paper you were assigned, uh, the Dilks paper looks at the, that occipital region and makes the argument that that region is involved both in this perceiving the shape of space around you and also in um, saying what kind of room it is, what kind of scene it is, okay? Um, and, um, right, and so also the Walter paper also looks at brain regions that are involved in telling you what kind of scene that is. And they argue that actually all three of, or they argue that two other, the two other regions are involved in this. So all three of those scene regions contain information by various measures. Usually the pattern analysis measure that we talked about a couple classes ago can show that there's not just a strong response to scenes in those regions, but there's information about whether the scene you're looking at is a beach or a forest or a kitchen or a bathroom or whatever, okay?